Sockers trail up by two. Dwyer's trying to get him the lead. He does, and he's fouled by Watts. Matt Dwyer's first basket of the ball game could not have come at a more important time for Wichita State. And Watts comes flying in, knocks him to the floor. A chance for a four-point play for Matt Breyer, who stands at the line. Just a 70% foul shooter. He's 0 of 2 on the day today from the line. He has had a magnificent day delivering passes and assists. He had six of them, but he'll take that four-point play anytime. And that gives Wichita State a shocking two-point lead. A four-point play by Matt Breyer. The shot clock and the game clock show about a second differential. Great. Shooting to tie or take the lead. Mathis is going to do it in a hurry. That's off the mark. The rebound. Porter is there, and he is fouled by Kuznar. And once again, Nick Porter right in the middle of everything. Jay, when you look up and you've got somebody down there flying around that basketball or on the floor or up around the rim, for Creighton, it's usually going to be that guy right there, Nick Porter. Well, Dana Altman's club has really battled back, but what a play on the other end by Matt Dreyer. So here's Porter to the line. He's five of six from the stripe. Dreyer has come back in for offensive purposes. Bradley, who's a good defender, goes to the bench. So here's Porter. Nick on the year, a 67% foul shooter. It's a one and one. Comes up short, Watts with the rebound. He forces it up and in. Tied at 53, Wichita State has one timeout remaining. And Mark Turgeon's going to use it. 11 seconds remaining. How about Dane Watts? Nick Porter on the front end of a one and one misses it badly to the right side. And Watts is able to come up with the offensive rebound and stick it back in. Watch this play. Porter misses it to the right side and kicks long. Nice pickup by Watts, and he goes right back up. Oh, what an offensive rebound. What a time to grab one. Creighton is out rebounded. Wichita State by six in this game, 33-27. And the second chance points, Creighton with 13 offensive rebounds, nine points. The last two, absolutely huge. Remember, this game is for pride, for seeding in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, for your resume building for the NCAA Tournament. There is a lot on the line in this matchup tonight. And boy, how similar is this matchup to the one we saw in Omaha earlier this year. That was tied at 55 when Tyler hit the game winner. We're at the Charles Cook Arena in Wichita, Kansas, tied at 53. Wichita State, eight fouls in the second half. Creighton has now fouled seven times, so Wichita State would go to the line. The Blue Jays have two timeouts remaining. Wichita State cannot stop the clock. And again, the possession arrow, oh so important, belongs to the Blue Jays. All right, you got a lot of options for Wichita State. You can look to Wilson. You can look to Miller inside. Maybe you give the ball to Matt Breyer or O'Geary. Let's see how Mark Turgeon's going to handle this. It's going to be O'Geary handling it. And probably for the final 10 seconds, eight seconds, seven you seconds, get six there. seconds. O'Geary with the basketball. Him no weights. O'Geary from the top of the key. That's off the mark. And we're going to overtime. Third time this season that Wichita State has given the fans a little extra basketball. We're going to overtime here at the Charles Koch Arena, and here's a look at how the final 11 seconds played out. No, I got to tell you, I thought O'Geary took a little too long getting in position for this shot. You like to get one loose up on the rim with about seven seconds to go to give your big guys a chance to tip it back in. He was a little late getting there. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to catch your breath and come on back. We've got overtime coming your way on ESPNU. Foul on Miller is his fifth. He leaves with 26 seconds remaining. Just four points, two of six from the field. Not a Paul Miller kind of night. Not what you would expect from a fifth-year senior who ranks among the leading candidates for Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. And really, 
when it comes down to conference player of the year, you almost have to give it to the best player on the team that ends up winning the conference championship because each one of those four teams that are tied for first has somebody who has carried the way for them. Blake Ahern down there at Missouri State's done a pretty good job, too. Conference's leading scorer, and the Bears are on the outside barely looking in. Well, let's see if Porter could do a better job of shooting free throws than the last time he went to the line. He missed the front end of a lot, one and one, but gave Watts a chance to stick it back in and put us in overtime. And he missed again. Guznard with the rebound. 23 seconds remaining. Wichita State does not have a timeout. Well, Gary's got to go quicker if it's going to be him. 14 seconds remaining. Kuznar sees an open lane. He puts it off the glass, and he's fouled by Hibma. Good move down the lane. You know, oftentimes when you're getting ready to set a play up, the defense will not allow you to run that play. You've just got to create something. Watch Kuznar right here. Good move. He gets around Hibma right now as he's moving down that lane. Well, Kuznar was a good move. And a timeout was called by Dana Altman prior to the free throw. Well, that will infuriate the folks here in Wichita. Dana Altman was talking with the official, Mike Sanzier, saying, I want to get a timeout. And as soon as they were prepared to give the ball to Kuznard, he called the timeout. This crowd is so loud that it was tough to hear, but that was indeed the case. And I don't want to say they're partial, but, you know, maybe they are a little bit. Well, Kuznard at the line is 4-4. Four of four. Creighton leads it by two. The Blue Jays are at the 10 foul mark. Wichita State still just shooting a one and one. The Blue Jays have two timeouts remaining. Wichita State does not have a timeout left in this game, and the possession arrow now points in the direction of the Shockers. So here's Kuznard, a sophomore from Houston, one of the real leaders of this squad had 17 points in Omaha two weeks ago, hit six of six from the foul line. Tonight, 11 points, four of four from the line. And he back irons the first. Well, that changes all the strategy now for Wichita State. 12 seconds remain in the game. Here's Ryan Martin coming in. And you ask yourself, should he miss this one on purpose or go ahead and make it? Well, he's made it. Now Creighton's got to get the ball up. Now Wichita State's Creighton. got a foul. They got a foul right away. They got it to Hibma, and Hibma is fouled. Two seconds go off the clock. Not a bad idea. Hibma's 10 of 15 on the year from the foul line. He's a sophomore from Pella, Iowa, who only averages about 15 minutes per game. And Mark Turgeon's going to send Matt Breyer into the ball game. Hibma has not been to the line tonight. He does have five points in the game. Calmly puts in the first. Even if he makes this one, it's still a one position ball game. And here comes somebody in the lineup that has proven in the last few minutes of this game, Matt Breyer, that he can hit the three. You can just about bet that Breyer or Geary is going to get the ball on the other end. And remember, Wilson can also hit the three, too. How about Hibma tonight? Don't you think he's played well? Missed it now they tie with the two. Remember, Wichita State does not have a timeout. Seven seconds, six seconds, inside five. O'Geary, Breyer for the win. Got it! 